Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. I'm wearing my natural hair straight for two weeks now. You know, I've been curling it, I've been living in it, and due to the fact that my natural hair is quite dry, I figure two weeks is a decent enough time for me. Give it a wash, get back that moisture, and fingers crossed, make sure my hair reverts. Okay, I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing. Um, I only did one shampoo though. So, we're gonna continue. <laughs> we're gonna continue. Sorry about my extractor fan, but you can really see the damage now that I've applied the clay to my hair. You can see the really bad affected section. It's damaged all over, but this is the worst affected, not my curl pattern. The only section that is my curl pattern is around here at the back where it's really, really nice and shrunken up. That's the only thing that's my curl pattern. The rest of it is just a mishmash. Can you see this strand? It just refuses to curl back up. Oh dear. Well, that's straight. You can see these pieces straight. The side section, it's like still completely straight. Doesn't really hold much of a pattern to it. In a towel on the 23rd of August 2018, also known as GCSE Results Day. Um, also, if that helps, I haven't I haven't got my Invisalign yet, just because I feel like I feel like I need to document this, and that this will be my evidence for the future. So, several times I've told there's no way back from heat damage. Um, or any kind of real hair damage, you have to just cut it off. The obvious piece is this little section here, but I don't want to cut it because obviously to cut all of that damage off, I'll be left with like a hole, <laughs> so I'll have to cut the whole thing off. And you know, it's just so irregular, the damage. And I just feel like I'm so close. I feel like I'm on the brink of something and I feel like I can actually repair this. This is the damage close up. You see, like, I, f I had way more straight pieces than this, and do you see, like, they're starting to wave up. I feel like there's something, there's something, something's got to give, and I, I just feel like it will get there. Oh, sorry, 9th of September. So, May, June, July, August, September. Just about four months since I ruined my hair. <laughs> So if you did remember from my very first photo, my hair was hanging right to my shoulders, this side, and the, the piece right by my ear was dead straight. But as you can see, it's curling again. My mouth is really dry. I've just come back from the dentist because I now have Invisalign. <laughs> I wanted to show you my wash and go. I've used a brand new gel which has really elongated and stretched it out and it was only like three quid. I'm quite impressed. My extractor fan, but oh well. It's the 17th of December, I am not naked. And this is what my hair is looking like. I have to document this because the only part, as you can see, the only part of my hair is this that's damaged. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zig. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. But really, I just hope that you and everyone that you love are doing well. So I first want to start by disclaiming because I don't know the extent of your damage or what you did to damage your hair, um, but I thought it still might be useful for me to share my testimony as to how I recovered my hair from damage. Um, a lot of people ask me to big chop, but I just didn't want to. Quite selfishly, I wanted to hold on to my length 
and I am really glad that I made that decision because my method recovered way more hair um, and I lost way less than if I had just gone ahead and done a big chop. So I personally believe that I had a mix of both chemical and heat damage. I used John Frieda's three days straight keratin infused hairspray. It promised to keep your hair super sleek and smooth and it was heat activated and then it would just come out in your next shampoo. It didn't. Um, and then on top of that, my hair looked banging but I have to be honest that I straightened my hair every single day on a high heat. I've, I remember that it was a really hot bank holiday in May 2018 and I, I straightened it every day. I used curlers on it, all of which on really, really high heats. That's just not even necessary for anybody straightening their hair. So both of those things resulted in me getting my hair damaged all over. It doesn't always look that way, but hopefully you would have seen in that clay shot how damaged it was like all over my head. I just knew in my gut, I just knew in my soul that I could recover it. So the first thing that I believed that I needed to do was to strip my hair of the keratin. So phase one for the first month, I washed my hair every two days, every two days. Just sharing what I did. And I used shampoos with sulfates, any cheap SLS brand, um, knock off head and shoulders, Tesco coconut shampoo, anything I could find that contained SLS, I used on my hair. So every two days I was shampooing and conditioning my hair, but I was making sure that shampoo was stripping whatever chemical I had in my hair. And also on top of that, I started to use clay treatments and I also used, at one point I used dish soap on my hair. It was a rough time, but I just knew that that's what I had to do for my hair recovery. So my next phase in the kind of second month, I started to move into reconstructions. I also changed my shampoos to neutralizing shampoos. I used Aubrey Organics Swimmers Shampoo. It is a neutralizing shampoo that you use after you've like been in the chlorinated pools to restore the pH balance of your hair. And I also used Mizani's um, neutralizing shampoo, the one that you would use after you've had a relaxer to stop it activating any chemicals on your head even further. So I then moved from sulfate shampoos to neutralizing shampoos and that's when I also started using reconstructive treatments. Anything you could think of, you saw it here on this channel, I used Pureplex by Knight & Wilson, which is a cheaper version of Olaplex, which I also used. I used Aphigee, all of those three things. So I was doing reconstructive treatments and I was using neutralizing shampoos and then I would follow up with any type of deep conditioner. That, so that brings us through to like end of July-ish, going into August. I then started to really make sure I was using a protein and moisture balance on my hair. I had done some stripping, I'd done some reconstructing. But there's only so much protein your hair can take and obviously having type four kinkier hair, it really does crave that bit of moisture. So I started to make sure I was incorporating a moisture protein balance. So I did the following. This is where it starts to get a little bit more technical because I would rotate my wash days. My first wash day, um, it would always follow a condition, cleanse, condition style of washing or regimen. So my first wash, which I would do every four days now, four to five days, um, would be a reconstructive treatment like Olaplex, for example, or just any type of rinse out conditioner. I'd put that on my hair, detangle with that. Then I would shampoo with a sulfate containing shampoo still, or clarifying shampoo of some kind, like As I Am's clarifying shampoo. And then I would uh, follow that up with a moisturizing deep treatment mask. Pretty much exclusively used Miel Organics protein-free moisture mask and As I Am's hydration elation mask. I would sometimes use Cantu's deep treatment mask because that's kind of in between protein and moisture, it's a little bit lighter. 
but that's essentially what I would use. Then the next wash day, another four to five days later, I would co-wash my hair. I would use As I Am's Long and Luxe co-wash and I would follow it up with a protein deep conditioner and it would always be Miel Organics Mint and Babasu protein conditioner. Shampoo, moisture, because the shampoo would strip that moisture away and then because co-washes are moisturizing, I would co-wash protein to keep that protein in my hair. Now, when it came to styling my hair, I decided I would go for a month to month rotation as well. Basically, I started to realize that like twist outs and braid outs stretch my hair out. Obviously, that's something we already know, but it would stretch my hair out. So therefore, all of the damaged pieces and straighter pieces would remain straight because they were all stretched out along with that curl. I would have to use like perm rods and things to try and encourage it to curl up. So they were cute styles and you know well within your right to do that but I started to realize that I don't want my hair to stretch out. I want it to curl back up because it's damaged. So my choice was to wear wash and goes. I know that they aren't suitable for everyone. They don't work i think they work for everyone but anyway that's a whole nother discussion so i'm almost doing like a max hydration type of thing with my hair by encouraging it to curl up by constantly wearing my hair in wash and goes so whatever wash regimen i'd done for the for the day i would follow that up with cantu's curl activating um moisturizer and eco styler gel i did also try diva curls super stretch coconut curl cream and let me tell you that stuff is good that stuff really works but we don't talk about it because it's all scandalous but it did work and on the second month i would go into a protective style i'm not that good at those but anything i could try to do i would do chunky flat twists mini twists anything like that so month one wash and go month two protective style month three wash and go month four protective style that's how I would do it. And every wash day, which was on a weekly basis, I would rotate between protein and moisture balance. December 2018, I went to Texas to see my mum for Christmas. I still wore wash and goes. Then I came back January of 2019. I put my hair into box braids. Those lasted for two months. So that took us up to March where I wore my hair again in a wash and go. Then in April, I went on a holiday in April, so because I was going on holiday and was in my next phase of protective styling, I got my hair put into cornrows. So I wore cornrows for that month. And that brings us up to May, which you will have seen that photo in the thumbnail. So I'd recovered my hair really well. I hadn't big chopped. I had not big chopped. I had done little dustings, and I mean like, like this much, I would trim this much every so often, like every three months or something like that. Um, but I was really, really selfish about it. I should also point out that every time I applied a deep conditioner, it was in my head for at least 20 minutes, at least. I really made sure it penetrated my hair shaft. I couldn't do any five minute conditions. These were real processes for me in order to recover my hair. So I continued that kind of regimen uh, throughout 2019. Then I, as you guys know from my most, one of my most recent videos, I started to go through it. So October, I made the decision to cut my hair. I cut quite a lot off, about three or more inches of my hair in a bid to, really start to get rid of some of that damage um but i didn't cut the front of my hair which i do kind of regret my hair usually grows in a heart shape but i chose to only get the back cut like up to just above my shoulders and my hair was coming near bra strap length so i did really cut quite a lot off and then in december i straightened my hair and then uh, february of this year i wore my hair in box braids 
which brings us up to present day, where we all know now my hair is completely different and I've decided to go on a completely different regimen because I couldn't do what I was doing before. I was really specific about how I was uh, taking care of my hair back then. So I think that I've covered everything. I really hope I have. If you have any other questions, please do leave them in the comments down below. But also, if you are going on your own kind of damage recovery journey, do what works for you. If you don't want a big chop, you do not have to. You do not have to. And I will remain a firm believer that you can recover some forms of damage. There, I said it, I said it out loud. I believe that you can recover some form of hair damage because I am living proof, I did it myself. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.